Hi again, everybody, and welcome to Inside Golf. I'm Harry Donahue. Today at Sunnybrook Country Club, which every year hosts the Haverford Philadelphia PGA Classic. The winner takes home $100,000. It's for club professionals, members of the Philadelphia section of the PGA. And that is the largest one-day payday for any PGA section in America. We'll find out who the winner was and find out how he did it. And we're also going to meet a young South Jersey man, Brandon Kinesi. His is the story of the love of the game of golf, but more than that, a tremendous amount of courage and determination. When you see it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So stay with us from Sunnybrook Country Club. It's Inside Golf coming up. Inside Golf, presented by PGN Plus. Play your golf bucket list by Jersey Man Magazine. It's a Jersey way of life and Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street. And by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf. Along with being stewards of the game of golf, your local PGA professional wears many hats. We are teachers. We are players. We are managers. We are merchandisers. And community leaders. But we all wear one badge. PGA professionals are well-trained experts who work hard to share the joy of golf with our neighbors for over 90 years. To find your local PGA professional, visit phillypga.com. Brought to you by the Philadelphia section of the PGA. We are the experts in the game and business of golf. Golf is your passion. Each round is a unique experience with memories that last a lifetime. Make your next round one to remember with pgnplus.com, the professional golfers network. Sign up for free for exclusive access to the best private courses in your area. Already a country club member? Go to pgnplus.com to learn how to take your membership further. Play your golf bucket list only on pgnplus.com. Book your tee time today. Welcome back to Inside Golf. Today we're at Sunnybrook Country Club, and it is the annual Haverford Philadelphia PGA Classic. For years, Haverford Trust has sponsored this event at Sunnybrook, and it is, as I mentioned earlier, the largest one-day payday in any section of the PGA of America. They get a nice crystal ball to the winner, but more importantly, how about a check for $100,000 from the Haverford Trust. On behalf of the Philadelphia Section PGA and our, our 900 professionals in three states, uh, we can't thank uh, Haverford and Mr. Cannell enough for this amazing opportunity that we get. Um, it has started it, it started back in 1997 and, and obviously has come to uh, what is uh, a premier stroke play event in the country for PGA professionals. So uh, if you wouldn't mind, a nice round of applause for uh, everybody at Haverford and Mr. Cannell for this amazing opportunity. Jeff Surrett, Executive Director, Philadelphia Section of the PGA of America. And Jeff, uh, this is about as big a major, I guess, as guys in the section are going to get it any time during the year, huh? Yeah, it's really amazing. It's an amazing opportunity Mr. Cannell uh, has brought to us. Uh, obviously, the folks at the Haverford Trust Company um, putting this event since 1997. And, you know, it grows every year, it grows in stature, it grows in lure as well. You know, um, golf professionals from around the country talk to uh, talk to our guys when they go to a PNC or they see them somewhere else, you know, you got that one event, that guy that writes a big check, right? So uh, it's really a really great opportunity for our members. 100,000 to the winner, and I think the runner-up gets, what, 5,000. So yeah. there's a little bit of a discrepancy. Is, yeah. A lot at stake mm -hmm. to come home with that uh, that winning prize. Talk to me about the, the field. I know you got over 140 golfers here today. Mm -hmm. How do they qualify to get into this event? So our members uh, qualify off of our points list. So we have a, a, a collection of points events each year where they gain points. Um, and basically the top 100 uh, get into the event from the year prior. So uh, the 2014 points list, um, they'll qualify off of that. Uh, and then there's 40 sponsors exemptions and, and uh, generally 16 of those are amateurs that are guests of Haverford Trust that play during the day, but they don't play in the event proper. Um, so all together, we generally year in, year out, have anywhere between 126 and 134 professionals that play in the tournament. Sonny Burke looks like it's in A1 condition. It is perfect. Uh, the the members that our members that have been coming in have raved about the golf course. The greens are perfect. Uh, the rough is lush, uh, but uh, making for a great test of golf today. Well, a great test, and to the winner goes a big spoil. There's quite the spoils, yes. So um, it'll most certainly make their make their year, probably their career uh, as well. We we don't get the opportunity to play for money like this, and it's it's quite special. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Eric. 
we did have two of our professionals finish today uh, in a tie at two under par. Uh, we are going to have a sudden death playoff uh, coming up number 18. We're going to play 18 over and over until we have a winner. After 18 holes of regulation, Jamie Komachek from Rivercrest and Gulf Mills assistant Josh Rackley were tied at two under par 70. On the first hole of the sudden death playoff, both parred the 18th hole. And the second time around on number 18, Kolmanchek lipped out his birdie attempt that would have given him the win. Rackley then made his par putt. But Kolmanchek missed his putt that would have extended the playoff, which meant Josh Rackley got his biggest payday ever. I caught up with the winner and George Cannell and Joe McLaughlin from Haverford Trust. Well, the gentleman with the name on the check, Josh Rackley, second time in this event, Josh, and obviously uh, this time was better. It was a lot better. It was 11 strokes better than last year. Tell us, tell us about the playoff. I know you played uh, the 18th three times, Correct. and you gave one back the first time you played it during uh, the regulation. And then in, in the playoff, both times a par, and of course the second par won it all. Yeah, 18, you did not want to be above the hole or pin high, so you want to be lower in the hole. So you have the uphill putt, and all three times I hit myself pin high or back behind the hole, and it, it left tricky uh, tricky pars. And I was lucky to, lucky enough to make two pars coming in. George, this is a special uh, win for you. Uh, you know Josh from Gulf Mills, and I know I don't want to say you were rooting for him, but it was nice to see him win. Well, the thing with Josh is uh, he always – comes up and says, how are you playing, and wants to know about my game and the rest of the stuff. And I said, have you been able to practice at all? He said, oh, yeah, I, I get over here at 6 in the morning, and I go on this shift at 12, in other words, at noontime, and then I do 12 to 8, in other words, I close the shop. So this wasn't lucky. I mean, Josh really worked for this one. Well, Joe, I'm sure you're glad to see a, a nice 22-year-old, even though he's not from the Philadelphia area. He's an adopted son, huh? I think it was great, you know, and, and the shot that I loved the most wasn't the eight-footer that you made, but it was that sand shot from about, what was that, 170 yards? It was a fantastic shot, and um, for somebody 22 years old to win this kind of money, it's going to be a difference maker, and I know that when George first had the mindset behind creating this tournament, it was to give people like yourselves an, an opportunity to, um, to do something special, so I hope that you achieve your goals that way. You know, I just wanted to ask Josh, what's your future? What are your plans now? I mean, what do you do for an encore? Um, I'm going to try. I'm going to attempt Q school for the first time this September. In September? In September, correct. Okay. And you got a $100,000 head start. I, I have money to, to support <laughs> myself now. Yes, sir. All right. Well, <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you the crazy thing. When uh, Josh told me about this uh, three or four weeks ago, I, I said, have you ever considered the tour school? And he said, absolutely. But... Uh, I don't know whether I got three grand or not, or maybe it's more than that when you get in a higher level. So, uh, Josh, I'm really pleased. Where's it going to be, Josh? Um, either Georgia or California. Okay. I'm not 100% sure yet. Well, you're ready to go. First class. First class. Game is tuned up. <laughs> got a win under my belt. And you got win under pressure here today. Oh, it, yeah. Talk about pressure. Man, I've never seen so many eyes looking at me golf. <laughs> well, congratulations. It's only going to be more pressure, but you can handle it. You uh, showed what your medal was today. Good luck to you. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Josh. You know, golf course superintendents are the unsung heroes of our great game. Thanks to the game's efforts, we now have turf that needs less water and is more sustainable and offers natural wildlife habitats on our courses. If you love golf like I do, like I do, like what I do, <laughs> thank a golf course superintendent. Thank a golf course superintendent. Do thank your golf course superintendent. Thank a golf course superintendent. A message from the Golf Course Superintendents Association of America. At Valley Forge Casino Resort, we're rolling out the action and bringing it all to the table. So go all in at Philly's premier entertainment destination. Now on sale, Frank Sinatra Jr. May 23rd, A Bronx Tale, May 28th, Thunder from Down Under, July 11th, Valley Forge Casino Resort, the only Philly area casino that has it all.
Welcome back to Inside Golf. Inside Golf is proud to introduce you today to Brandon Canisi from Northfield, New Jersey. 23 years ago, Brandon was born without fingers or hands on either arm. But it didn't stop Brandon from doing the things that ordinary kids do. As we'll see, Brandon is far from ordinary. Despite his physical limitations, he's grown to love the game of golf. And with the help now of the club fitters at the highly regarded IZ Golf in Haverford, Brandon hopes to improve his game. Over the balls of the feet. So this should be like Tom Watson says, as being a defensive guard in basketball. Is okay. you're, you're in a neutral, good, athletic, balanced place. Well, Brandon, here you are. You've been playing golf for how long? Basically my whole life. You know? You're 23 right now. Yeah. So you started off playing uh, as a youngster, a little tyke, with, uh, what, your grandfather's club? Yeah, with my grandfather. Uh, luckily, he was a lefty. So, you know, I'm little. I just threw, threw the club underneath, and it felt natural to me and started hitting it. You didn't know any better? No, not at all. <laughs> and you've been playing ever since. Now, how about other sports when you were growing up? Yeah, played a little bit of everything. I, uh, basketball, baseball, uh, football for a little bit. Baseball was a big thing. Shriners helped me out making a glove, making a bat for me, prosthetics. Um, and then I just grew, and my love for golf just took over everything else, basically. So you've come here to IZ basically for what reason? So they can help me out, man. These guys know what they're doing, and uh, hopefully they can help me out because there's nothing really out there like this. So We've seen George and Mike working with you here, getting you fitted. Uh, the club that you have, the how long is the shafts on the clubs that you've been using? They average 55 to 58 inches. Okay, now are they going to change the length of that shaft or just make it easier for you to get a grip on it? A little bit of both. They're going to they're gonna make them vary down in size how it's supposed to be so I can stand, you know, the same distance away from the ball with every club. But in altogether, it's going to make it easier for me in every way. Tell us about your game. I shoot good. I, I, What's your handicap? I say eight or nine. I'm out there shooting 80 to 85 basically every time. And your tee shot goes how far? About anywhere from 230 to 250. Now after this fitting, maybe you get it up to 260, 265? Anything. Anything we can take, <laughs> take it, you know? To, to you, I can say we've done this tens of thousands of times. Right. To you, my answer is I'm sorry, we haven't. Now we're using what we have For done sure. tens of thousands of times. So, and again, a lot of it applies to you. So... Mike Morrison, George Izet Jr., they're the guys here. As Mike says, if something's wrong with your clubs, Mike is really the guy they're seeing. No, that, George, George is the backup. I'm not sure. I don't want to get paper, I don't want to get anybody in any trouble. George, uh, first of all, your father started this business back in the 20s. Right. Uh, you've been at this location on uh, Haverford uh, Road since uh, the 30s or 40s. I'm sorry. 46. Okay. Uh, in all those years, have there been People like Brandon come in looking for help and a particular type of fitting like this? Uh, with Brandon's uh, particular skills, no. Uh, we've done a few through the VA back in the early days before prosthetics got good, but uh, we haven't done too much of this stuff. So this is rather unique. I'm sure you'd agree with uh, what George just said over the history of IZET and all the club fittings that you've done. I noticed in, in your working with Brandon, uh, have you ever seen a shaft that long for somebody that's under six foot? Well, technically, per USGA rules, it's not legal. So if I did, if it was anybody else, I'd say, what are you doing? Uh, but no, nobody else can hang on to it that way. And But again, we're not talking USGA here. We're just talking enjoyment of the game. What is the primary objective? What are you trying to do now with Brandon to get his you know, love for the game of golf uh, increased and to get him to be a better player? Exactly, and it's just like anybody we deal with is as we can use what we know, uh, what's the history of fitting here in the building to just make the game more enjoyable, to make it easier to make solid contact, send the ball where we're intending to, just like with all of us, it's a target game, uh, and have the balance and the feel be the best to athletically reflect the talents of the golfer. It, it's sort of irrespective of how somebody's put together. A couple of years ago, we had a gentleman that uh, I'm, I'd never asked the reason why, but was an amputee, so would swing a club only with one arm, and that's its own kind of unusual kind of thing, but had to go through the same kind of process as how's he holding on to it, what's he doing, uh, where's his point of feel of the golf club, and so then we would just repeat it from our point of view to 
give them the best setup that we can. So. It, it looks like you're primarily working on extending the grip, George. Is that what you're going to try to do on the shafts? We're going to try to lower the grip to a spot where we can get him bent over a little bit more uh, using two grips, a uh, putter grip with a flat spot for his right hand, and then for his left hand, a very tiny little piece of a grip uh, to try to get at the bottom of the grip. That way we can set that at a certain spot on the shaft, be able to get him to bend over a little bit better and see if we can get him in a, a better swinging position, get his plane better, that's all. Well, Mike, the pressure's on because Brandon told me he's about an eight handicap. Oh, no. So let's see. Uh, by the end of the summer. I need to play him now. By the, by the end of the summer, you know, he wants to get down to a five. Oh, is that all? Only three. Oh, we're, we're in good shape then. We didn't say next year. We said by the end of the summer. Oh, that's, we're in good shape. <laughs> Mike, George, always a pleasure. Thank Thanks you for your time. Appreciate it. And uh, I'm sure Brandon appreciates what you've already done for him and the future. The, the, it's, it's yet to come. We'll prove what so, we can do. So center him. Come on. Yeah, what do you think? Long, you know, yeah. so that's where it has to be. Yeah. Mickey McLaughlin down at Cape May National, giving lessons to a lot of people. And Brandon's one of your pupils. How did you first get in touch with Brandon? Well, I came outside the shop one day and I uh, was standing there and I saw this set of clubs. And I went to myself, well, Paul Hahn must be in the area. He's a trick shot artist and out of West Palm Beach. And I said, he didn't call me, he's an old friend of mine. And I said, uh, well, I'll wait for somebody to come out. And I came out and this young man grabbed those clubs and I went, are these yours? And he said, yes, sir. I said, uh, well, tell me what it's about. And he goes, I, I, I don't have any hands. I said, oh my God. I just got to a point in my life I went, I'm going to help this kid. I said, uh, it's about caring, really. I mean, how can I help this kid get a new set of clubs? Well, I'm going to call, first I called Pete Trent. I'm up, my old buddy from St. David's. I said, Pete, uh, we got to get to George Izet and see if George will help this young man, and uh, we'll start working it from there. What has been the biggest you know, satisfaction for you, the progression in, in Brandon's game, or just the fact that he's willing to go out there and and – try a game with uh, clubs, obviously, that aren't the normal size and length and everything else. Well, Harry, it's more about uh, caring for this young man and, and, and setting him in a different way. We can get him in the graphites and a new head. And, and I'm not just thinking he's 23 now, but I'm thinking when he's 50. How we will adjust to a new set of clubs? And maybe somewhere else in the line, he'll help someone else, some other young kid, or maybe one of the vets. They don't see him on the TV or whatever. He, he's going to do some junior programs at KB National this summer. We're going to have maybe a, a thing in the fall for an outing for him. But we're going to get more people to understand what we're doing here. It's, it's caring. How's your demeanor out there on the golf course when you're out there? I mean, do you ever, you're not a woe be me guy? Uh, no, I just love to be out there with friends, family, whoever I'm with. You know, it's a great time. And get out there it doesn't matter rain or shine you're hitting the ball and hitting the ball bad it's not it's going to there it's going in the hole it's a good time no matter what you're doing sounds like your family has been uh, very supportive and i guess inspirational to what you're trying to do here they really especially my uncle you know he made my clubs he made my love for the game possible so i really have to thank him but uh yeah everyone's real supportive well good luck i'm sure you're in, in the right spot here at isaac definitely i appreciate it Golf is your passion. Each round is a unique experience with memories that last a lifetime. Make your next round one to remember with PGNplus.com, the professional golfer's network. Sign up for free for exclusive access to the best private courses in your area. Already a country club member? Go to PGNplus.com to learn how to take your membership further. Play your golf bucket list only on PGNplus.com. Book your tee time today. If you haven't seen it already, I'd like to introduce you to Jersey Man Magazine, published by former Eagle tight end Ken Dunnick. It's the only men's magazine in our area. Enjoy articles on cigars, martinis, the mob, business, politics, and, of course, golf. Written by big-time journalists like George Anastasia, Bill Lyon, Sam Carcitti, and many others. Subscriptions are only $20 a year and are available at jerseymanmagazine.com. The Philadelphia PGA and Rothman Institute continue to provide new tips for keeping you on the golf course. Here to help us deliver these tips are sports medicine surgeon from Rothman Institute, Dr. Paul Marchetto, and PGA professional from Philadelphia Country Club, Scott Riley. All right, thanks, Leela. We're back here with a golf fit tip. 
with Doc Marchetto. We're going to talk a little bit about hydration today. You know you're getting excited. Maybe it's one of the first rounds of the summer. You're going to be in a four and a half, five hour round for a golf outing, maybe with your company. You're all excited. Um, you went out the night before because you know you got the day off the next day. Sure. Hopefully you got to sleep in a little bit. And then you're out there with your buddies and maybe you want to have four or five beers and Doc, maybe talk about in the morning or even the night before what people can do to make sure that you're hydrated so you're at your best when you're out there playing. So that's a big one. You know, the alcohol dehydrates you, or in the morning you're drinking a cup of coffee on the way in, another cup of coffee before the round, also a diuretic. It's really going to wash your system out of fluids, and then you're out in a five-hour round. You're never drinking enough or not drinking appropriately. Um, you end up with the cramping at night. How many patients come to me and say, Doc, I have this problem at night. I have these big heavy calf cramps mm -hmm. or thigh cramps. And it has to do with dehydration. So you want to drink reasonably during the round. You want to pump fluids in. And of course, there are the Gatorades and all these supplements that have the electrolytes that, that to uh, re, re uh, introduce some of these things that you've lost during the round. Even though you don't think you're perspiring, the heat and the exercise loses fluid. So you got to pump the fluids in, whether it be just water if that's all you have, or you can supplement with these uh, Gatorade type drinks. Very important to do that during your round. Well, you nailed it, Doc. Those are easy things that you can do. So take care of your body, and it'll take care of you at lower scores. Thanks so much. Well. I'm Harry Donahue here at Kennett Square. I got my trusted partner, Tom Carpus, with me. I got a little downhiller, but it's a little windy, and you never know how hard, how hard to hit it. I didn't even hit it. Yeah, hey, what'd you do there? Well, Tom, as you saw, I marked my ball, but I left the mark there. And before I even had a chance to make an address, the ball took off. Do I got to bring it back? Well, the answer is no. Uh, basically, the rule says once you replace the ball and took your hand away, the ball is in play, even though the coin was still there. That's step number one. The other question is what, what caused the ball to move? Now, if you didn't address it or didn't do anything to cause it to move, what else could have caused it? Well, in this case here, it's a pretty windy day. You're on a slope. I think the wind moved it. So if the wind moved it, Wind is not an outside agency, so therefore the ball would be played from its new position. So instead of having a 20-foot downhill putt, I got virtually a tap-in, all because of Mother Nature. Today is your lucky day. Uh, that's because? Golf rules. Every game has its playing fields, built and managed to optimize play. But none can compare to the complexity of a golf course. The superintendents charged with presenting faultless conditions every day no matter the circumstances, are part of a proud profession that has gone from grass grower to educated professional. Today, the job demands multiple skills to succeed. Superintendents manage turf grass with passion, pride, and obsessive detention to detail. And they also manage significant budgets and a wide range of highly technical, precision equipment. They practice math and science, mentor and motivate people, and care for the environment. While every golf course is different, the challenges and demands are the same. Like comrades in a common cause, they are bonded by the uniqueness of their profession. They're the keepers of the playing field upon which the great game of golf is played. And like the game of golf, honor, integrity, 
hard work and passion are the core of every great superintendent. Their skills and knowledge, along with hard work, dedication, and attention to detail, make superintendents the unsung heroes of golf. So whether you're a touring pro or a weekend golfer, thank the player behind the scenes that makes it all possible. The Golf Course Superintendent. You'll find them out on the course every day, from dawn till dusk, making sure the course and your golfing experience are the best they can be. At Valley Forge Casino Resort, we're rolling out the action and bringing it all to the table. So go all in at Philly's premier entertainment destination. Now on sale, Frank Sinatra Jr., May 23rd. A Bronx Tale, May 28th. Thunder from Down Under, July 11th. Valley Forge Casino Resort, the only Philly area casino that has it all. Got a young golfer in the family? Whether their dream is to grab a national ranking or just have more fun on the golf course, sign them up for the Philly PGA Junior Tour this summer. It's competitive play on premier courses for boys and girls 18 and younger throughout Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. Perfect for gearing up for the next high school or collegiate golf season. Available to both new and competitive golfers. Registration now open year round. Help your young golfers find or improve their game. Sign them up today at phillyjuniortour.com. Well, it took a couple extra holes, but Josh Rackley comes through as the winner of this year's Haverford Philadelphia PGA Classic, $100,000, and now he says he's going to take it, hopefully, to the next level. And uh, if he thought he had a lot of pressure on him today, which he did, I'm sure the pressure for Q School will be a lot greater. But, hey, he's already proven he can handle it on this stage. We'll see what he does nationally. Next week here on Inside Golf, we're going to be at Phoenixville Country Club because this year, Phoenixville is celebrating its centennial. They have lots of things planned, especially for the month of June, and Inside Golf will be there to take a look at that charming nine-hole course and what the members think of it and what they think about celebrating 100 years at Phoenixville Country Club. Our thanks to the folks from Haverford Trust and everybody here at Sunnybrook for a great and thrilling finish. And of course, our congratulations to this year's winner, Josh Rackley from Gulf Mills. I'm Harry Donahue. Remember, no matter how bad it's going for you out there, whether you're in a playoff or not, don't pick up. We'll see you next time right here on Inside Golf. Inside Golf, presented by PGN Plus. Play your golf bucket list. By Jersey Man Magazine, it's a Jersey way of life. And Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street. And by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf.